Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. As we all start our EAFC 24 journeys, we need one thing, and that is coins. Whether it's to buy players for your team, do an SBC, or maybe even spend coins on an evolution that you want to do, coins are king, and we all need them. And especially in the early game, it can get confusing and difficult and overwhelming. How do I make coins on whatever budget that I'm on? Well, we're going to talk about it all today. Whether you have like literally zero coins, whether you have 25K, 50K, 100K, I want to get all of you guys to as many coins as you possibly can get. We're talking a million coins or above, and there's plenty of ways to do that in the early stages of this new game. So we're going to talk about a lot of market today. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, drop a question down below as well if you have any throughout the video, because I'll be down there answering some of those as time goes on to help you guys out because I know it's a stressful time and there's a lot of pressure but there's really not pressure but it feels like there is so let's get into it because really soon here we're going to be getting on our ultimate teams for the very first time choosing our starter nations blah 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 and we're going to want to go to the store right away we mentioned this in our how to start the web app video if you haven't checked that out I would recommend checking that out as well I'll leave a link right up here check that out if you're just starting and you want to know how to do more of that but those welcome backpacks that we really hope EA is going to give us this year we don't know if it's they're doing it for sure because of the whole fc founder thing that's brand new but we hope they give us a couple free packs to start the year off because that makes our lives so much easier and if we have those we want to open them because that's going to give us our first little bit of coins that we could potentially have and that's going to help us get off the ground so much easier now once you've done that or maybe you're logging in with the ultimate edition and you've got 4,600 FIFA points that you're going to open up, rip those packs right away, get the coins that you can get, and then we're going to get down to business. But once you have a few coins, even if it's just like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 coins, we can start building, we can start trading, and it's all going to be based around the low budget grind, right? That's what I like to call this first day of the web app, maybe the first couple days you're on the game. It's just a grind, right? When you have zero to 25,000 coins, we're going to look at my video from last year where I was in that grind the first day of the web app last year. I have 23K, right? It's all about flipping as many players as you possibly can for not huge profits per card. It's just like finding a player that you can sell for three, 400 coins more than what you buy it for and just do it on repeat over and over and over. That's how you'll rake in the coins day one. And it's actually not that hard to do. I want to point you guys to where we're going to be doing it. This SBC right here is the Foundations 1 SBC. And it's actually the only SBC that all of us will be able to do until we complete it. Then it'll open up all the other challenges. We're talking about like Foundations 2, 3, Hybrid Leagues, Hybrid Nations, League and Nation Hybrid. Very popular SBCs for the beginning of the game. But we have to get this one done first. And this is where a ton of people, myself included, made a lot of coins last year on like the first day of the web app. All around bronze cards. Think about it. You choose your starter nation. You've got a few cards in the club. You open up whatever packs you get from the store. There's a couple more bronze and silver cards in your team, but you realistically need a few more. You can see some of these SBCs, right? Exchange a squad of three players for a bronze pack. Exchange a squad of two players from the same nationality. And what do people think? When it doesn't tell you that you have to put in a certain bronze, silver, or gold, everybody just goes for bronze. So even though it might be actually cheaper to do this SBC with silvers, people are just buying bronzes. That's one of the first places I would be looking to trade on the web app or on the game this year when you're starting your ultimate team. Now, what kind of cards we're gonna trade with and how are we gonna do that? Basically, all we have to do is we have to find bronze cards that are selling for more than 200 coins, 300 coins, 400 coins, right? Because we're gonna try to get them at their lowest price possible and flip them at that price. Now, right now I'm on the FIFA 23 market and these prices are all messed up. So this is not the greatest example, but I wanna show you with some of the cards I traded with last year to give you a bit of an idea, right? Here's my transfer list last year from day one. I think it was like five, six hours of trading. You can see there was some golds in there. There was a couple silvers, probably some of those I'd packed from my welcome backpacks. But look at all these bronzes, guys. And it's not just all the popular. It's not like I'm trading with PSG bronzes or players from Dortmund or anything like that that are bronze. I'm trading with players that people are using for SBCs. And actually, bronze pack method worked for a little bit last year as well. But look, I've got a Brazilian center mid I sold for 1300 And I've got a German right mid here that I sold for 1600 
um, a Brazilian center back that I sold for 900 coins. Those are amazing sales because I probably bought all of those cards for less than like four to 500 coins per card and I'm selling them for over a thousand or at least close to a thousand. That's what you're going to be looking for and you have to think about what players are people going to be buying to complete those foundation SBCs, right? Well, we all chose a starter nation to begin our ultimate teams, right? That's where you get a lot of the silver sales and the bronze card sales is people are going and buying cards to link with what they already have in their club to then finish that SBC and to get it done. So Argentina, France, Brazil, Germany, Portugal, all of the top nine nations look for silver cards, specifically in some certain positions. If the SBC, um, like this one, is a single club chemistry ex exchange, a squad of two players but it might be like a squad that i don't even know the positions or whatever that are inside of it you know if it's two players and you have to have chemistry well then you've got to have players from the same nation you got to have players maybe from the same club right single club chemistry single league chemistry for these three squads you know that's what you kind of have to have for the chem so focus on the positions for those players if one of them is like right mid or if it's center back then you probably want to go and trade with players in that position because people will be buying players like that to get chemistry for the SBC. So like last year, German right mids were all over a thousand coins uh, on that first day. So if you're seeing, I'm not saying to go buy German right mids this year, check on the web app when you're actually on the game. Never just assume a trading method because it worked last year or because um, you know somebody said it was gonna work. Always go and check it on the market, right? And again, like I mentioned, this is a grind, guys. Like, yes, we're gonna be buying these cards for maybe like three, 400 coins and trying to sell them for like seven, 800. It's a grind, but that's what gets you off the ground, and that's how you can start making your first coins. So basically, just look for some cards that are bronzes or silvers that sell for a little bit more uh, than what you can buy them for, especially for those top nine nations, and you find a card, you find a filter, and you just grind it, get on bids, get on snipes. You can build your coins up very easily the first day, and that can honestly get you 10, 15, 20,000 coins, and then from there, everything opens up. Once you have more than 15 to 20K, you are cooking and from there we can start to look at the golds because the golds as you move up just provide you with more opportunities to make coins now especially as people go and do more sbcs they go from doing this foundation sbc and they move forward into other ones like the hybrid leagues hybrid nations now last year ea made these packs untradeable there's still going to be demand if they're untradeable for sure because everybody likes to do these sbcs but you just have to be careful because there's maybe not as much demand as there used to be. And if EA does not release these this year or if the packs are way worse, then this may not work as great of a trading method. Again, have to put that out there because EA can change the SBCs every single year. These have not changed since like FIFA 17, but who knows? EA could do something crazy. But these SBCs are very popular to get some good packs. Like you get a rare mega pack, a jumbo rare players pack for hybrid nations, and a jumbo rare players pack for hybrid leagues. They're untradeable, but they're really, really good packs that could get you a really nice player to put in your team and that's why people are okay spending some coins on them and doing the SBCs. And one of the best ways to find out what players to trade with in these SBCs is to actually click on the SBC and look at the solutions, guys. This is my number one favorite way of making coins every single year in the beginning of the year. You look through a couple of these solutions because it's not easy to do all these SBCs, right? Especially when you don't have that many cards in your club and you don't have that many coins. You guys, myself included, are going to Footbin or Footwiz, one of these web websites to find a solution and you can see here the Footbin AI and the community squads community squads were all submitted by actual people that were filling out squads on Footbin now we have Footbin AI and these other websites have AI to calculate the cheapest squad I don't think that's going to change this trading method though because it's all about the prices updating on these websites right like as you can see what happens with the solution trading is what this is really called is a player like Boateng, right? A German center back. Uh, you can even see, I bet. Oh, yeah, this was... Okay, this is very... In the middle of the year last year, he had a crazy, crazy spike. But he was selling for like 550 to 600, 700 coins in those early stages um, of FIFA 23. Where's another one? Let's try to find Hector Bellerin. I think he sold for decent amounts last year at the beginning of the year. Yeah, he was like 800 coins. You know, some spikes here or there. And these graphs are not going to be daily graphs. 
um, from the beginning of last year, so I can't go all the way back and look at that. But some of these cards were fluctuating. Like Hector, Hector Bellerin at one point could have been 500 coins, got into an SBC solution as the cheapest solution, right? This one showed up near the top as the cheapest solution. So let's say Footbin has his price at 500 coins. He gets in the cheapest solution, you know, a thousand or, you know, however many people see that on Footbin, they go start to do the SBC. And this Hector Bellerin card goes from 500 coins to like a thousand. And it's crazy to watch this happen on the market. We did it. We saw it so many times last year. It was insane uh, to see this happen. And a card like this, as people are all trying to complete the uh, SBC and they're using the solution, he just skies in price. Like literally in an hour's time, sometimes it takes 30 minutes. Sometimes it takes like just almost seconds. It seems like the cards will fluctuate up and down like crazy. And then his price will kind of go up a lot. And then that's where you sell. And then his price will come right back down again as his SBC and as Footbin updates his price. And he's no longer like the cheapest, right? And then another solution comes to the top of this list here and people start using another solution and they buy other players and usually you start to see prices just do this all day long and you just you buy during the low you sell during the high that's one of my favorite ways to make coins every single year it's going to work again this year because people like to use solutions because sbcs are not always easy especially with all these requirements that are inside of here and uh market prices are constantly moving so definitely watch out for that now if you're wondering like nate i don't even know where to look what sbc should i look for to do this with the whole nine yards first 11 in hybrid leagues are really good hybrid nations as well uh what is this third sbc elite eight is another one it's kind of the more difficult sbcs that more people use the solutions for so definitely keep an eye on those cards here's what i would tell you too right like maybe just go in from the top nine nations we've already mentioned those a couple of times now portugal is one that's really good argentina is really good brazil goalkeepers last year i think a lot of people are going to be watching these this year because i'm pretty sure all brazil goalkeepers were like three four five thousand coins it was it was nuts how uh, expensive some of those keepers were last year but just keep an eye on some of these cards you don't even have to know the prices on footbin but if you're on the market as the game is out just add cards to your transfer list and if you see a card like okay it's a 450 and then you you check it in your transfer list and it's sold and then you go check it on the market and it's like 800 coins and it doubled in price from 400 to 800 you're like okay there's something going on there so maybe the next time that card goes down to 400 you buy it and then you wait till it goes back up to 800 which theoretically should happen if it's needed for an SBC. That's kind of the way you can do this sort of trading method. But again, if you're trying to find specific players, look through those solutions and just, just kind of watch player prices and figure out which ones go up and down. One little way you can do research ahead of time if you really want to grind it is you can take a look through some certain positions and some certain nations that maybe don't have that many players in that nation or that position like brazil goalkeepers right or one thing that i've always traded with was uh, portuguese left backs i think this kevin rodriguez was a card that i bought um you know hundreds of at probably like three four hundred coins five hundred coins and i would sell them over a thousand twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen hundred coins in a short time period because he was one of the only um portuguese left backs and he was so great to trade with so there's so many ways you can find cards that sell for inflated prices another way you can do this just one really quick thing i can show you guys is on footbin if you're like nate i don't know what cards to look for sort by version go to gold usually works best with gold non-rares if i'm being completely honest um and right now the the database is kind of being added in so it doesn't show it very well but once this is uh perfectly added in everything you'll be able to sort by this and click on price and it'll send the most expensive cards to the top especially for gold non-rares then you can sort by a certain nation. Like if you want to see all the French gold non rares and their prices, you'll find guys here that are like three, four, five thousand coins. And then you'll scroll down and you'll see one to two to three K. Those are the cards you want to look at. And if their graphs go like this, that's a good card. And you'll see that their prices move and that you can time the low and then sell on the high. So that is solution trading. It's one of my favorite ways to make coins. And those are the methods that I use to get off the ground. We're talking 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 coins, even up to 100K. I will use all of those methods because then once I get, well, especially once I get past 50,000 coins, then you can get into some investing, especially if you're in the early, early stage of the game. That's when you start to look at investing in some cards that you think could rise in price as more and more people log on to the game. And this is where you can really 
this is where the grind turns into the fun part, right? Because everybody's grinding, right? They're going after getting cards, putting them in your team. Um, and then after that, it's all about, let me just invest in cards as their prices rise, as more and more people get on the game. And as we see the appreciation of assets, if you will, if we go with the correct terminology, this was the most popular investment last year. And this is a, an example of what could happen. Now, it's probably not going to be this crazy this year, because let's be honest, this was insane. Erling Holland went from 40,000 coins to 400k in literally two weeks. And is that going to happen again? Probably not that crazy. The lengthy meta happened last year, which gave additional hype to this Holland card. He's higher rated this year. There's no way he's going to be 30 or 40K. That'd be crazy if he was that price to start off this year. But those are the sorts of cards that you can look to invest in, guys. We're talking, this is what gets you from like 100K to like a mil because you just buy, invest, the card goes up, you sell. You pick another card to go buy and invest in as it its price moves up, then you go on and you sell. I mean, there's so many different players you're going to be able to do this with. I would stick mostly to gold cards that people are going to be buying for their teams. Usman Dembele was another great shout. 35,000 coins up to 100 thousand coins if we're keeping it technically with the psg vibes for this year we're going to look at ashraf hakimi last year hakimi as the psg right back to use went from 25k all the way to 74,000 coins if you had like 50k and you bought two hakimis right here and then you know you can see on thursday the second day the game was out he goes from 25k by the time we get to the weekend monday tuesday he's 60k if you sell here at 50 60k you've literally just more than doubled your coins and there's other cards you're going to be able to go back out and buy and see their prices appreciate more as well so what cards do you want to look for right you want to look for the most meta the most popular cards that people are going to be buying for their teams and you can't buy ones that are like super cheap i know a lot of people are looking at starter teams and starter squads Guys, we can't be buying like Van de Ven. Uh, we can't be buying, you know, Allen St. Maximin for cards that you're going to be putting into your starter teams that are going to just get destroyed in value. Like this is an example I use all the time from FIFA 23 is Lacroix. Like you can't buy this card and expect it to really rise up that much in value because he's just not. He's a low rated. He's only used for like the first week on the game. Lacroix goes from 7K to 10k and then look what happens after that he gets absolutely destroyed as people move on from a card like this and upgrade to a guy like Kimpembe or Kunde those are the types of players that you want to look into buying those types of investments that people are going to upgrade to Kimpembe last year 20k all the way to 50,000 coins easy dub right I'll look at Kunde too because we mentioned him I think you guys kind of get the idea on this right uh, and so that's kind of who to buy, right? And when to buy. You want to buy as early as possible. Now, the market could be a little different this year, guys. If EA, it's all going to depend. We talk about it like it happened last year, and we talk about it like it's going to be similar this year, but it could be different, right? And that's one thing I will caution you with this is uh, we're going to be covering the market live every day. So if you're not sure, like, Nate, should I buy Kunde at his, whatever his early game price is in FC24? We'll be covering it. If the situation is very different, we'll make adjustments on the fly. Join um the twitch streams that link is down below in the description sub to the channel if you have not already we'll be making these fast move decisions and kind of deciding how the market looks on the fly but you guys kind of get the idea right meta cards that aren't super duper cheap but people will be upgrading to in their teams in the coming days after those first weeks in the game those are the cards you want to buy also have to give out a massive shout to informs guys this inform delafeu was one of the most popular invested in cards last year at the beginning stage of the game delafeu was sixteen thousand coins you're like oh man everybody's investing in him he's not gonna go up right 93 pace four star four star for a card with this much pace and this good of dribbling in the beginning of the game even though he only had 78 reactions and 80 composure he went from 16k to 42,000 coins in that two-week period. Insane investment. Amazing investment as the team of the weeks are always rare because there's less people on the game, less packs opened, and these cards will appreciate in value. So definitely keep an eye on this part of the market as well if you're having coins to go out and invest. Now, the next question is, well, Nate, when do you sell? We've been looking at all these graphs, right? And you see the price spike. Well, when do you want to sell? A lot of these prices, and this is a rule that it's a general rule, honestly, that happens every single year, guys. Honestly, without fail, it's kind of crazy uh, how this works. Let me look at like Hyunmin Sun from FIFA 23, or actually even, let's go to FIFA 22. Uh, we'll look up uh, Hyun Min Sun because a lot of these prices, guys, they actually end up peaking 
in a certain time of the year every single year we saw in those fifa 23 graphs that prices really went down in like the half of the month of october like october like 15th last year was the big crash and then this year in fifa 22 it was a little bit later in october but you can see hyunmin sun went from 311k and then it took him to the beginning of november he was 90,000 coins so what i would tell you is just be careful with these guys. Um, some of them will hold their value longer than others. Like Kevin De Bruyne, you can see he didn't drop until the middle of November. He went from 700k to 200k. Yeah, he was you know 90,000 coins in the first couple of days. Even like 300k for him was an insane price, all because of the rarity, right? Super duper rare card. Great investment last year. If Lewandowski or Salah get in for him, they'll be great investments. But I would say a sell time for just about anything that's a gold card. You'd probably want to sell by the time we get to that second weekend league if you're really trying to not lose a lot of coins. And guys, we know with this upcoming year of content, we're going to have so many different promos um, with car designs and stuff that they've already shown us. Um, I'm trying to find that one picture where they've got a lot of the car designs like, you know, showdown, flashback, player SBCs, promo cards and packs, evolutions that we're all going to be able to grind towards. There's going to be a ton of content this year like there was last year. Gold cards are not going to maintain their values very well. Uh, it's very similar to how they didn't do that very well last year. So I'd be very careful once again with holding on to gold cards for too much longer than the first couple of weeks. Like look at Jenman Sun. He went to 300K last year, went to 500K. Uh, wait a second, he had a team of the week card, didn't he? I feel like he had an early team of the week card and that may be why his price went crazy like that. But he dropped down a bunch like the middle of October. So just don't hold on for too long because those prices will 100% drop a lot icons and heroes um, are a really good shout as well if we look at fc24 players to invest in icons and heroes are going to start out really cheap like the meta cards will like mbappe holland and you can buy those and you'll see those prices appreciate just don't hold on to too long uh, and they'll probably uh, make you a ton of coins that's the biggest way to invest in the early stages of the game is with those investments now some ea fc24 specific investing opportunities guys I really think that this early game is going to present us with more investing opportunities because of some of the new things that EA are adding. First of all, with the new Nike Mad Ready promo that we already know two players, right? There's going to be five players. EA have already told us two, Chiesa and Enzo Fernandez. Now, first of all, as well, we always, when promo cards come out, we think to invest in the gold cards for those promo items. I think people are going to be investing in Enzo and Chiesa. It is unknown if that rumor or that leak from earlier on this year is going to be end up uh, happening and it's true as gold cards will be in packs as the promo cards at the same time. We still don't know about that. I'm a little skeptical if I'm being completely honest um, because the beta rumored was the same way where when there was inform cards in packs in that game, um, the FC24 beta that is, that the, the gold cards were out of packs when the informs were in. So if that's the case, Chiesa, Enzo Fernandez, whoever else is leaked to be in the Mad Ready promo is going to be a really good investment. And then also, when these cards drop in packs on that first Friday of September 22nd, guys, everybody will start opening up their packs at 6 p.m. As it says here, um, what does it say about the Nike Mad Ready promo? Yes, Mad Ready players will be in packs from September 22nd at 6 p.m. UK time, and they'll be in packs for a week. There's going to be so many people opening their FIFA points that they get from pre-ordering the game in the first couple of hours after this happens. Keep a close eye on these Mad Ready cards when they get dropped into the game. That could be a really, really good investing opportunity in the early stages this year as well because those cards we have to buy to then complete objectives with them to get better packs and it's going to depend on the packs as well if they don't give out good packs then not a lot of people are going to want to go and do it but it'll be the first dynamic images the first promo cards that we'll have of the year so those could be really good cards to invest in as well and then of course evolutions right we're still learning a lot about evolutions there was another leak yesterday that foot sheriff put out um this these are the actual requirements for a free evolution and a paid evolution we're still really unsure on how this is going to work but I do know for sure that everybody in the community, just this is how the FIFA community works, there's going to be people that will try to find the most meta, the best possible cards to put in evolution so that it's worth your time and you get the best card in the end. There's going to be people figuring that out and that's going to impact player prices, guys. Like, if there's people that are trying to figure this out right now and saying that Ansu Fati might be one of the best cards to put into this um, paid evolution, even though it maybe costs you 50,000 coins or a thousand FIFA points. If your Ansu Fati goes from a 78 
to an 84 with those kind of stats like that might be a concept it probably is a concept but that's crazy right and people would definitely go out and buy onto fatis to then go start the evolution with and you would see his price move on the market so definitely keeping ahead of the meta and the power curve and what people are getting excited about on this game is going to be something to be really interested in as well for in, ter for in terms of investing in cards and seeing prices rise. Now, one last thing I want to talk about, I'm actually going to go back to uh, my video from last year where I was looking at prices on day one. Um, last year, I was looking at some position change trading guys. I was buying um, Timo Werner's. I remember Timo Werner had a striker base position, but he could be moved to left wing. So I was buying left wing position change version of Timo Werner on the web app, even before anybody could play a game. But on the web app, I was buying left wing Timo Werner's and selling them for more than what his price was on the market for striker because people are paying more for that position change version. This year, with the way position changes work, all you have to do, this is according to EA, is uh, you put the player into the position, you don't need a position modifier, and they automatically just, if they have that alternate position, they just switch to it. Like, if Ferland Mendy had center back, he would just automatically, boom, conform to a center back card. I think that would mean his card is a center back, and when you would list it up on the market, he would say center back. So position change trading is one thing that may not work that well this year, because there's no, like, cost to position change the card, whereas you could just go on the market and, and buy that card position changed already. If you put a player into your team and it changes positions to a secondary position and it stays that way, and then you can list it up on the market, like that Ferlin Mendy, if it were to stay a center back, if he had that alternate position, then technically you could probably still do some sort of position change trading, but everybody knows that you just, if the player can play in one of those positions, they can do it just by automatically morphing into that position in your squad. So that might be a place to trade. It probably won't be though. I really see the, like the end of the position trading. Chemistry styles will still definitely have a little bit of added value on the market. Hunters, shadows, engines, maybe architect this year because of the lengthy meta last year. So keep an eye on players with position, uh, not position modifiers, sorry, uh, chemistry styles. They might go for a couple extra thousand coins, maybe not a thousand, but a couple extra hundred coins for a shadow. You find a player that sells for like, 2k with a shadow that you can buy for like 1.5k without it that's a trading method you could flip all day long so those are some of the ways that you'll be able to make coins in the early stages of eafc24 guys i hope it helped you out today again if you have any questions drop them down below in the comments i want to help some of you guys out this is one of the things i enjoy about the beginning of the game so much is helping people go from ground zero and building their coin total up and if you have any other trading methods down below shout them out as well there's gonna be so many ways to make coins in the early stage of the game it's just gonna require a little bit of grind and a little bit of time but it's worth it right you're setting yourself up for success throughout the rest of the year of Alton team if you enjoyed this video though drop a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new it's been nathan account see you guys in the video tomorrow peace out